When you talk about playing through the pandemic, probably the picture perfect example of how to handle it so far, because every day is a challenge, is how it's been handled at Boston College with the football team. Jeff Halfley is with us. And how do you approach every day? Because, you know, pride cometh before the fall and everything has been fantastic so far, but it's almost like you don't want to puff your chest out too much. No, you, you can't pump your chest out at all because as we've seen, things could change really quickly. Um, our guys have done an unbelievable job since coming back at the end of June and really doing everything right and sacrificing for each other and, and doing everything they can to get on the field and stay away from COVID. Um, you know, but we test three or four times a week and I, I still check the email and keep my fingers crossed and hope for the best right now. But a credit to our team and the doctors and the protocols because it's been it's truly been incredible. You're probably getting questions from all over, whether it be from staffers, your assistant coaches, or most notably the players. And I'm curious to know these young kids, you know, 18 to 22 years old, they look for leadership in times like this. They've never been through anything like this. You've never been through anything like this. What sort of questions have they had for you since they have returned to campus going all the way back now to June? Well, I think most of the questions were when we first got here, you know, where are we going to play? What it's, what's it going to look like? How are we going to practice? You know, what's it going to be like in the locker room? Can we, can we hang out with each other? I shoot, there were so many questions that I didn't have any answers to anything. I'm a first year head coach trying to figure out how to manage to be a head coach, uh, coach defense and take care of the rest of the team. And then COVID jumps in. Um, so we've just done the best we can, but the questions have seemed to go away. The kids trust in the process. They trust in each other and in the staff. And like I said, um, you know, we really, we have not had one case uh, since we've come back and it's been, it's been remarkable. So we'll keep our fingers crossed and we got two more games to go and hopefully we can, we can finish it out strong. Well, describe to me what it's like, whether it be at practice or in the locker room, what sort of provisions have you made to keep the guys away from each other and keep as safe as possible? Well, we've distanced everything. Um, you know, whether it's at practice, usually when guys are standing on the sideline, they're close together. We either have masks on or we have shields that go over our helmets. Our guys, they spread out in meetings. Most of the big team meetings are in our indoor facility where all the doors can open up. And it's, it's basically like having a team meeting outside where I'm shouting and yelling and trying to make sure everybody hears me okay. Cause we can't access those team meeting rooms because um, we can't have too many guys in a room. In the smaller meeting rooms, it's guys with masks out on, spread out, um, to make sure that if anybody is sick, that there's no contact tracing that would lead to more people getting sick. And then, shoot, I just left the staff meeting where it's the same thing. It's not your traditional, all the coaches in one room watching film together. It's a handful of guys in one room spread out, masks on. It's probably the only time talking to you today that I'll have my mask off. So I appreciate the time of fresh air in my own office. <laughs> Glad I could give that to you. I would guess your most vulnerable time might be game day. I know that you're masked up on the sideline, but the players aren't. They're all of a sudden interacting with another team that's gone through another set of protocols. How do you feel on game day about the team's safety? Yeah, and, it, and that's a good question. And it's something probably a lot of people are wondering. And truthfully, we probably feel safest on game day because what happens is, you know, every team we play right now is in the ACC and we all get tested probably three times a week. And then the ACC comes in with a test that we have to take Friday. And then once we get that test, we're, we're together and we basically create our own bubble. Um, so whether we're in the team hotel and it's just us or on the bus ride to the stadium and a lot more buses than we're used to having. So we're spaced out. But by the time we enter the stadium and the opponent enters the stadium, it's almost like we've each formed our own bubble. And you feel pretty confident at that point. You feel pretty safe. Truthfully, it's probably uh, the safest I feel being around such a large group of people. Um, you know, so people probably don't realize that, but that's the truth. So you're at this point of the season where you're looking around the country and you see game after game postponed or canceled each week. What goes through your mind when you see that? Well, yeah, it's this week alone. I think there were about 18 games that were canceled and, and you keep reading and hearing about it. It's just a really good reminder for me to stand in front of the team when I can and, and just say, guys, we got to tighten up. And you can see this is it's getting bad in a lot of places. And um, if we want to finish out the year and make sure these seniors who will never get to play football, some of them, this will be their last two games. Uh, we all have to sacrifice for them and for each other. And if that means, you know, staying in your room, keeping your mask on, not being around other people, um, that's what we've done so far. And we need to continue to do that. So it's a really good reminder. And we just feel very blessed and fortunate that, that we've been able to play nine games already. I know some of my buddies have only played three games, four games, and, you know, hopefully we'll get through 10 and 11 healthy and then get to catch our breath for a little. Uh, forgive me, uh, a bit naive, and I probably should know this. And I'm sorry that I don't, but I'm going to ask you this question about the potential of a bowl season. 
Take me through where that stands. Yeah, you know, right now, um, the ball season's still open from everything that we're hearing. And, you know, I think there's there are certain teams, like I said, that are only playing six, seven games. So I, I really don't think they put a limit on it to you have to have six, seven wins. I think they'll basically choose at the end of the year who they want playing in the bowls. And you probably know as much as really most people right now. I mean, are they going to have a whole bowl week where you have the festivities and people going out around cities? And probably not. I mean, I can't imagine that they do. What I would imagine is if they do have bowl games, um, it would be going to like play another game in another city against another team with tests and you just show up the night before stay in the hotel, play the game, and uh, get an extra game for the kids who deserve it. But I think, um, you know, when you go to a bowl game, part of the fun is you're with your family, and the players have their families there, the coaches have their families there, and you enjoy the week and all the festivities that the bowl representatives put on for you. And uh, I, I just don't see that happening this year. Um, you know, but we're hopeful that, you know, if, if we continue to win games, we'll have a chance to play an extra game at the end of the year. Wild. But that's 2020. That's how it's been. You guys have done a great job. I appreciate the time you've given me to talk about it. Continued success and hopefully you get through this whole season clean. I appreciate you having me on and I hope you and your family have a great Thanksgiving. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you.